Hello and welcome to this service of worship for February 21st, 2021. My name is Allison Bowden and I serve as Dean of Religious Life and of the Chapel at Princeton University. Today is yet another snowstorm hitting central New Jersey, so we are not able to film in our chapel. The university is closed. So we're coming to you today from our homes and our dorm rooms. We are very grateful, as always, to Dan Elgosane and Andy Ayala, who put together our services every week. So grateful for the magic that they do. Thank you again for joining us today on this first Sunday in Lent. Hear now this call to worship. We begin this Lenten journey with worship. Though we traverse the valley, we pray God's Spirit will lead and guide us through. Though separated by distance, we gather with one heart, sharing our burdens and hopes for what is possible with God. O oh God, help our unbelief and turn our hearts to you. As we worship, send your spirit upon us, remind us of your love and grant us your peace. Let us worship together. A reading from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O God, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O God. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O God, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions, According to your steadfast love, remember me, for your goodness' sake, O God. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast and the angels waited on him. Here ends the reading. If I'm being honest, this is not a sermon I wanted to write. In part because it felt a little bit cheesy at first, but more than that, it felt hard. Hard because the idea that the kingdom of God has come near and the time is fulfilled is something I'm struggling with. It sounds too easy. As we enter the season of Lent and prepare for Jesus' death and resurrection, I wonder where the good news is. Easter was always a celebration growing up. It was the reminder of God's love for God's people and the renewing of our hearts and minds. Here we just heard that Jesus said, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. When I first read that, I thought, so what? I didn't feel that excitement and celebration from my younger years. I'm really glad the time is fulfilled, but it doesn't really seem like it. And how can I believe in the good news when we are in the middle of a pandemic facing the economic effects of said pandemic on top of racial injustice that's been going on for a very long time and a mental health crisis? So what? What is miraculous about this passage is the phrase, the time is fulfilled. Right before John is arrested, did you catch what was happening? Jesus had just been baptized and then the spirit immediately drove him out in the wilderness. He was there 40 days and tempted by Satan and with the wild beasts. Mark writes with a sense of urgency. The word immediately is used 59 times in the New Testament. And can you guess how many times that word appears in Mark? 41. Immediately, meaning no detours, no stops along the way. And I don't know what baptisms you have attended in the past, but the ones I've gone to usually involve a party afterwards, some time with family and friends. Instead of a celebration, Jesus is immediately thrown into the wilderness and tested. And you know what? I don't know that I would get all the answers right if I had been there. I certainly don't get it all right now. I definitely mess up when it comes to being an ally to the Black community. I definitely mess up when it comes to supporting immigration change and caring for my mental health. Here's the deal. I don't always know that I've messed up. I discover those wild beasts that Mark mentions in myself. But once I've been informed, whether by my own research or someone's enlightenment of the situation, it's on me to turn. It's on me to go another way. If you hit a dead end, you don't keep trying to go through it. You back up do a little bit of maneuvering, and turn yourself around. I find that even when I turn to God over and over, I still find myself wandering the wrong way. Part of me wants to say, didn't I just do this? 
Can't we be done with this already? Look, I've learned things. Here we are. Let's go. Why do I keep ending up on this road? And as I reflected more on that stance, I found no repent. There's a misconception about repent that I want to address. It's easy to think of the word as simply feeling remorse. But it's more than that. In Greek and Hebrew, the word for repent means to change one's way of life as the result of a complete change of thought and attitude with regard to sin and righteousness. It is very similar to when we say we are sorry and then don't change our behavior. It seems so simple. Just do different. But I often find myself stuck on that thing. I know doom scrolling is bad. You know, when you spend 10 minutes on your phone and two hours have passed. And yet I find myself doing it. I know I should go on walks every day, but it's so much easier to stay inside. Or knowing that I should get away from my computer for a lunch break, but it's right there and it's just easier to keep working. It's easy to keep living my life and buying the same products instead of trying to reduce my carbon footprint on the earth by switching to reusable bags and changing my products to use less plastic. It's easy to keep living in my privilege as a white woman and saying, it's not my problem, or asking the BIPOC community to do the work for me. Hmm. Repentance is really only half the story. The second half of that last verse in Mark says, and believe in the good news. We must believe in the good news, believe that we can combat global warming, believe that we can end systemic racism, believe that we can do work and rest. I've seen a lot of stuff on social media about manifesting 2021, manifesting that new job, that relationship friendship, lifestyle, believe and it shall be, believe and repent, believe and change your life. The funny thing is, is I was researching for the sermon, I learned something. Lent lasts for 40 days as an imitation of Christ's fasting in the wilderness before his public ministry began. Jesus had to be in the wilderness. He had to be tempted in the wilderness with the wild beasts before his public ministry. I've heard so many folks say that this year has felt like a year of Lent. I've said it. Lent has this sense of longing and darkness about it. It can be profoundly spiritual and extremely challenging. I don't know when this Lenten season will feel like it's over. I wish that I could say that in 40 days and some Sundays, it would be done. But I think maybe a better way to look at this 40 days is that of wilderness in preparation for our own ministry. 40 days of sustainable swaps, 40 days of reading about being an ally and anti-racism, 40 days of exercising, 40 days of affirmations. There's an anticipation of the end of Lent. But the question becomes, who will you be 
when it's over. The end of Lent is just the beginning. I'm not suggesting that doing something for the next 40 days will change your life, although it might. It tells a story, one that we may see parallels of in our own lives so far. Walking in the wilderness and tempted before we get where we are going. Once we get there, we continue somewhere else. With every ending, there is a beginning. Where will you be when you get out of the wilderness? That preparation comes before Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is near. Mark gives the wilderness two lines. Wouldn't it be nice if that's what it felt like? I imagine Jesus so firmly rooted in his belief that he doesn't stumble in response to his temptation. That is what I want my belief to be. And all of that comes before Jesus' public ministry begins. We can believe in change and then not do anything to make that change happen. The pulpit commentary says it in a really beautiful way. Without faith, repentance becomes despair. And without repentance, faith becomes only presumption. Join the two together. And the faithful soul is born onwards, like a well-balanced vessel to the haven where it would be. Without belief, repentance leaves us feeling in despair. And belief without repentance is really just an opinion. It is belief in change that makes this possible. We can show remorse and change, but it begs the question, what are you changing for? Are you changing to secure a better job, a higher status, a new relationship? Or are you changing because you've encountered God and you can't help? but be transformed. When Jesus said, repent and believe in the good news, Jesus was saying, turn to God and be transformed. My friends, the time is fulfilled. Christ has come. Repent and believe the good news of God. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear God, today is the first Sunday of Lent, a season of repentance, self-examination, silence, and waiting for the Holy Spirit. Through your Spirit, we too walk the way of Jesus 40 days in the wilderness, where our lives are laid bare and we come face to face with our desires for power, power over our lives and the lives of others, and maybe even power over you. God, open us up to your grace and mercy, your love and provision as we confront evil in every form that it presents itself in us and in the world. During this season of Lent, shatter our illusions, save us from ourselves, and open us to the new life of your Holy Spirit, a life of faith, hope, and love. We pray for the living, the sick, and the dying. Marianne, Sohabe, Christina, Rita, Chelsea, Jeff, and the Locklear family. We pray for the people of Texas as they endure freezing temperatures, leaving some without electricity and others without water. We pray for those in prison in body and in mind. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. May we resist the temptation to find rest in our places that muffle the cries of injustice. So we pray for those on the margins as well as those in the center, the powerful and the powerless. May we use this season of Lent to empty ourselves of all that separate us from you. Grant us, O oh God, the strength and courage to live the faith our lips declare. Bless us in our baptismal calling as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us continue with our prayer for Princeton. O oh, eternal God, the source of life and light for all peoples, we pray you would endow this university with your grace and wisdom. Give inspiration and understanding to those who teach and to those who learn. Grant vision to its trustees and administrators, to all who work here and to all who bear her name. Give your guiding spirit of sacrificial courage and loving service. Amen.
In this season of Lent, may we walk in the wilderness knowing that we can be transformed. My friends, repent and believe in the good news. Amen.